the entry into the temple is uh, is a strange feast because when the Theotokos entered into the temple, she. fulfilled the temple, being herself the living temple. And she began a new, a new pattern, which was always, from the beginning, our, our destiny. From the moment that God said, let us make him in our image, And from that point, even though I just called it a new thing when the Theotokos walked into the temple, what she did was fulfill all of the promises of the whole scripture through her obedience. And as we hear in the gospel, blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Well, from the beginning we were made in God's image, which is a crazy thing to think about when we, when we walk around and we look at all, the, all of the uh, people that we run across to, uh, to quote a wise man, uh, I always thought he must be a rather odd looking chap. We see all these, all these different people. We know all the people in our lives, and every once in a while we remember that we're made in his image, and we, we might take a second to think about that. How is so-and-so made in his image? We just have to use our God-given reason on these questions. We, we have to treat each person that we come across like a, like a pearl or, a, a, or maybe like a long lost treasure in, a, in, a, in the middle of a, of a dingy antique store or something. But either way, we need to recognize that the other person has value and, and actually unlimited value being in the image of God, as an immortal soul. I mean, a value that it would be impossible to put an earthly price on. And so, with the Theotokos, this imaging forth of God takes on a, a fuller meaning for us. In, in the ancient times, uh, people would make idols, and they still do this. They make idols, and then they so that their god could come and be in the idol. They make the image of their god, and then their god would come and live in the idol through certain magical inducements and uh, you know offerings of liquor and what or or, or, or whatever else it may be. And uh, and through this, they hoped desperately to get their God to come and be with them for a little while. So, but with our God, he makes his image. He makes his own image. And then he comes and dwells within us. This is why you have these psalm verses that say things like, talking about the idols, eyes they have and shall not see, ears they have and shall not hear, noses have they and shall not smell, 
tongues have they have and shall not speak. Let those that make them become like unto them. So we see that our faith is a complete rebuke, an inversion, a deliberate rebuke to the mockery of the demons. It's miles ahead and miles beyond to anyone, and, and who hasn't every once in a while felt the, the tempting call of anthropology and comparative religion. And, uh, well, how are we that much different from so-and-so? I mean, you know, hey, look, they believe that in avatars and everything. What we believe, what, we, what has been revealed to mankind, not just to me, not just to us here in this room, but to all mankind, It says in the prayer of Simeon, the light of revelation for the Gentiles. What's been revealed to us and in us is exponentially, it, it's so far beyond as to be, and so far beyond the practices of humanity and the understanding the failed, uh, foul, lies of the demons as to be in a completely different category. The difference between truth and falsehood. But it's more than that even. In this case, the falsehood is like a piece of paper, and the truth is like I don't know, Notre Dame or something? in a different category, a, a different size, every kind of thing, so far beyond. When you look throughout all of the world religions, you will not find one that has this concept of the imaging forth of their God. It's been so long for us in the West since we've been part of Christendom, it's easy, perhaps it's easy for us to think that the rest of the world has just all, always been roughly similar to us, and by us I mean Christians. But we have to, we have to remember, like, that we grow up in this culture and we, we have certain assumptions and everything about what's normal, and those assumptions creep into everybody, whether they're religious or not, and they form a foundation of how you understand the world. But for our ancient ancestors, uh, they, for them, just to take, let's say, the Danes, for example, they went from believing that the God of the Christians was so weak that uh, it was almost like having, they, they thought they had received a blessing from their gods because of the ease with which they could slay these people and, and the huge stacks of treasure they could get, and instead their gods were slain by the one they called the White Christ, because white was an effeminate color, and juxtaposed to red Thor. These are the, the realities of our history, the realities of our ancestors, but they themselves were conquered gave up all of that. The Theotokos is the first fulfilled image of God in that when Christ says, blessed are they that hear the word of God, and keep it. One could not more fully have heard the word of God, nor more fully kept the word of God within herself. And from this decision, from the moment that she walks into the temple, that was even before she had made her decision at the Annunciation, but 
She knew to choose the good. She knew to run up the stairs and be greeted by the high priest. She knew to hear the word of God. There's so many and so many different things on offer from the world. And we have to keep in mind the mercy of our God. It's easy to go out of here and, 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 and everything I say from the pulpit when I'm giving a sermon, I'm speaking to myself. It's easy to go out from here and forget everything. It's easy to, um, to look at a service as just another thing you have to do before you get to the things you want to do. So let's give thanks, those of us who are here, those of us who are in church regularly, let's give thanks for whoever it was that put in us, at the very least, fear of shame enough to come to church on a regular basis. Let's give thanks for whoever it was that put the notions of good, trying to build good habits or uh, let's give thanks to all those people that expect, for all those people that expect things from us that we don't expect from ourselves. And so we, and so we go hoping to become a better person, hoping one day to want, more, to want it more than we currently do. But these things are holy. The Theotokos is not only the new temple, she's also the new ark. And we see what happened when Uzziah took a hold of the ark. Uh, he was struck dead immediately. The ark was less holy than the Theotokos. And the Theotokos uh, was someone dared to reach out a hand to touch her and have it struck off by an angel. And she is, it's hard to use the term less, less holy, but she, from her flesh came the flesh of Jesus Christ, which is more holy than her, and, and yet we take it into ourselves on a weekly basis, sometimes more than once a week, but we're not <laughs> struck dead. But we say that prayer not unto judgment, that, that, that it may be unto boldness toward God, not unto judgment or condemnation. But we know if we think, if we look at the scripture and if we think for just a second, we know how worthy of death we are how obnoxious it is that we should even think to reach our hand out to holy things, let alone the most holy things. But thankfully, we don't depend on our own judgment of ourselves to decide whether or not to be here. We depend on those things I was mentioning before, our feeling of obligation to others, our feeling that... that um, Maybe we shouldn't be the ones deciding ultimately whether or not it's a good idea to go to church, but rather just believing in the revelation of Jesus Christ that, uh, that he came to save sinners. But, we, but, but, we, but we, we should really not forget. Even though it's scary, you don't have to dwell on it at all times because, uh, because it might be too scary. Some people might want to to dwell on the holiness of these holy things. How far above, we mentioned before, how far above what, what we do is from everything else that's being done on earth and has ever been done. And that has no, nothing to do with any one of our particular virtues, but entirely to do with obedience to God and to his merciful revelation of himself to us.
but it's good to think on these things every once in a while to remember why we're doing what we're doing. It should not be out of yeah. mere habit, although that's more beneficial than not. It should, we should grow from that point. It should not be out, out of a sense of mere cultural adherence, although that too is good, but we need to grow from there and understand the, the truth. The reason that these things take on a cultural significance for these things, meaning the things of the church, the holy things of God, take on a roots in the culture is because that's through the wisdom of the holy ones of that people and their discernment. They want, to, they want to pass it down to their children. They want to transmit it. They want to take part in, uh, in, the, in the garden of God. And they're doing what, uh, what uh, St. Paul said. Uh, they're, they're helping along this notion that we, should, uh, that we should hold fast to the traditions handed to us. And so uh, they, they uh, participated in, in putting all this together for us and giving it to us. Uh, and so that it's, the, it's, it's, the, it's the ground that we walk on. It's the, it's, it takes over as, as just being the walls that, we want, that we're used to having around us. And, and, it's, uh, and we don't have to think about it to just live our lives here. But it's good to think about it now and again. To understand and appreciate well, we know what to do. the tremendous holiness, well, just to maintain our humility, to, to maintain our humility. Let's not let's not take these things lightly. We have to take them matter of factly because they are matters of fact. So we're not supposed to over-dramatize them or um, add some sort of human element that makes it uh, somehow more palatable or more dramatic or more impactful as we see it. This is one of the reasons why over-composed, even though it might be beautiful, but like you know, through-composed and, and, and flowery compositions and things are somewhat frowned upon in church tradition. It's not because we don't like beautiful things, but it's because we don't want to bring too much of ourselves. We want to, there, there's, of course, the church is made up of individuals, images of God, all of them. But we want to just make sure there's, there's wisdom in the way the church has preserved these traditions and these customs. And one of those uh, elements of wisdom is, uh, is, to not think too highly of ourselves, or that, that what we've been handed is somehow in need of fixing or changing. Uh, but as to the Theotokos, the first Christian, the, 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 the ultimate exemplar, our champion leader, that's why we call her that, not just because it sounds cool. She's the queen, but she's also a, a leader, a standard bearer, someone to look to, and someone, it's so, it's such a simple thing what Jesus says, but it, if you think about it, it's actually the hardest thing in the world, blessed are they who hear the word of God and keep it. Many of us have spent our whole lives hearing the word of God and struggled to keep it even a little bit. So let's improve. Let's ask for her help. Yes. And she will give it. As we've seen in this parish in recent recent yes. weeks and months, so she will, and years. She's been with us for years, visiting us always, and um, in many ways, uh, shedding miracles upon us. So let's continue to ask for her help in, in what she is best at, hearing the word of the Lord, her son, and keeping it within her. Amen. The blessing of the Lord be upon you through his grace and love for man's heart. Amen. Amen.
your mother and of all the saints, have mercy on us and save us, for he is good and the lover of mankind.